All right. So without further ado, Linda, who's up next? So I, I was sharing my screen. I hope so you are able to see it. Can, can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. Yep. OK. So our next speaker is Arisa Hill. Uh, as I said, she began her uh, career in cybersecurity, cybersecurity as an associate IT security specialist within the energy industry. She currently works as a cybersecurity analyst. Uh, Arisa has also been involved with professional development organizations such as Toastmasters International, Women's Society, Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu, I think, and the Society of Women Engineers uh, in the past years. So I will head it over to Arisa and uh, we will see if she solved her problem. Otherwise, I will share her uh, slides. So please Hello. Move. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get this to work. I'm going to try. But mm -hmm. I will talk about what just happened. It's actually really funny. I just changed my um, speech from talking about women technologists to cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I changed it, um, besides the fact that I am a cybersecurity analyst, is because of what's going on in the world right now. So um, let me tell you what happened with my laptop. So I'm using my personal laptop instead of my work laptop. And I usually use my work laptop. I work uh, a majority of the days of the week. So there's really no reason for me to use my personal laptop right now. And my personal laptop was two updates behind. When I updated it, Windows actually released an update that was not compatible with Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. And so my Google Chrome completely crashed and that's the browser I usually use. So right now I'm using Firefox, mm -hmm. but it just goes to, um, it ties directly into my um, presentation of cybersecurity <laughs> and updating your things all of the time. So it's really funny that that happened. Um, so what is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is the, art of protecting systems, programs, applications, and anything from cyber attacks, from hackers. It involves a variety of tools, technologies, best practices. And really our main goal is to ensure that everything is kept conf confidential, no um, important information gets out, that that information is um, maintains its integrity, it's not compromised, and that it's always available. Um, meaning that if somebody has us protecting their website, at any time their participants can access it. And I call it an art because it's really a mixture of um, being able to stay creative at the same time of developing those really technical, what you may think is in the box. So it's really a mixture of both. And anytime that I talk to people about cybersecurity, I notice that a lot of people don't really have a full understanding of what it is and um, why it's important to anyone's life, um, regardless if you're a cybersecurity analyst, you're working at a company, or you just browsing the web at home. And what I do is um, my team, we're at, we actually work 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, somebody is always online, and we're always monitoring our company's network. We're always ensuring that the changes that happen um, won't cause any like um, service disrupt disruption, which actually ties into what just, just happened with Windows. It wasn't properly, um, properly tested, so um, it compromised the applications that may be on somebody's computers. Um, we, all, we also analyze threats, vulnerabilities, anything that comes out in the news, we're trying to see if it's uh, applicable to the company we work at, and if anything was to get hacked, at any time, we would try to remediate that as soon as possible. So why does this apply to everyone, um, regardless of you being at a company or you um, just browsing the web at home? Um, so I'm gonna talk about why that applies and I'm gonna just start by breaking a couple of myths. So most of the time when I talk to people in cyber, about cybersecurity, whether they're in IT or not, they don't really have the best perception of it. So people think, you know, we're in the room in the basement playing with robots or they think something like the matrix. It's not like that at all. Um, so the biggest myth with that is that it's just an IT or cybersecurity issue. Um, and I say IT or cybersecurity because I, cybersecurity is a branch within IT, 
but oftentimes even talking to other people who are within um, the same department, they don't really understand what we do. And cybersecurity isn't everybody issue. Why? Because as long as you're browsing the web, you're on the internet or you're developing something that may be connected to the internet, um, you should have a level of cyber hygiene where your stuff will always be protected um, because hackers never sleep. Another common misconception is that it's always external threats, that someone is always trying to attack us from the outside, but that's not true at all, which is why it's important for all of us to have um, proper knowledge of the cyber threats and the cyber landscape, because the biggest threat is always internal because um, an external threat hacker can send an, an email to someone on the inside and it'll take something as simple as you clicking on a link or you downloading a file or even in your personal email, you download a file and now your computer is, um, your, your data is breached. And you don't want that to happen because um, especially at home where you have your bank account numbers, your social security numbers and all of your other sensitive information. So it's actually more likely that somebody inside of a company or you yourself will click on something that will cause your information to go out into the world and you really don't want that to happen. And then another misconception is that all hackers are bad, which is not true at all. Um, there's actually three categories of hackers. You have um, the black hats, which are the what you would consider the bad guys, the ones who hack for their personal gain or their personal advantage. They hack to um, expose people, they hack for money. Then you have the gray hats. They're a little bit in between a gray hat, a black hat and a white hat. Um, gray hacks, they don't do it for money um, necessarily. They're not authorized to hack a company, but they'll hack a company and then let them know, hey, you have this vulnerability available. And um, sometimes they get money for that. And then sometimes they just get acknowledgement, which um, is satisfactory for them. And then you have a white hat who, um, white hats, they are authorized by a company to hack into their, um, their systems. They're called pen testers. And they're also within cybersecurity as well. So if you're someone who you just wanna break things and you want to hack into a company, you can actually look into being a pen tester. And the reason I decided to talk about cybersecurity is with COVID-19, um, the coronavirus, and the increase of people working from home, there has been an increase of cyber attacks and hacks. Why is that? Hackers never sleep. Um, unfortunately, the hackers, they could really care less about it being a pandemic outside, and they're using this as an opportunity um, to get into companies. And I've actually seen a lot of um, executive directors are getting their emails hacked, um, a lot of people with their personal technologies are getting hacked as well. And it's really serious and something that we all need to be aware of, especially with IoT devices. I know earlier Diana mentioned how a lot of people feel their um, responders, 52% of people feel they're not um, secure, and then 90% of um, um, web developers feel like they're not secure. And the truth of the matter is it's not. I've actually been on a website that is available to all of us where people's um, devices at home, if they're not locked down, you can actually see in their living rooms um, and you can see what people are doing at home. So it is very important that we're aware of that because we have these devices in our houses not realizing that somebody can be looking at these devices, a random person into your living room. Um, and so it's pretty serious and we should all be aware of it. And the top three attacks that are happening, happening currently with COVID-19 is typo squatting, which is where um, a hacker will buy a domain that looks similar to one that you may always use, like google.com, but instead of it being google.com, it misses an O. So it's very close to the domain, but if you accidentally type it in wrong, now you're in a malicious website. Um, an example of that would be the John Hopkins um, map that they had where they was displaying um, where all of the COVID cases were and giving all the information on it. They actually was able to get that map embed malicious software in it and put it on a different website. So people were accidentally clicking on the wrong website, um, going to this map, not realizing that this map was infected. And everybody was doing this on their home computers, their work computers, and this is why it's very important to be aware. Phishing emails, which is where somebody will embed um, a malicious link into an email. So you may think that you're just downloading an Excel file, but as soon as you enable it, 
um, it downloads software on your computer. And the thing with this is that that software can be on your computer for months and you don't even know. So it's just collecting all of your information and everything you're doing, all of your data. And it's even um, worse in a company because we often have privileged access to things. So it's collecting all of that company's data, all of our passwords, all of our elevated privileges. And we don't know until it decides to execute its attack. Um, during the coronavirus, there has been a lot of um, false emails saying that there's masks available, people are going and buying masks off of fake websites and things of that nature. And then vulnerabilities and remote technologies. And um, an example of this would be Zoom. Everyone is using Zoom right now, but um, honestly, no company should be using it because Zoom, um, not only is Zoom mostly based in China, um, and that raises a lot of data privacy concerns. A lot of their engineering and their research and development team is located in China. They also had an attack uh, where a hack where they um, hackers were able to access your webcam from your Zoom application. And on top of that, um, 500,000 people, Zoom users, passwords and emails were being sold on the dark web. So this ties directly into having proper cyber hygiene. Because in the example where Zoom, your password and email, you don't even know if you're one of those people who were affected, your password and your email is being sold on the dark web, it's important to always have different passwords and be changing your password regularly because now that password is out and let's say that you use that same password for 20 different accounts. Well, the person who decides to go and buy your password and your email now have access to your password and your email for 20 different accounts. So that's why it's important to really understand cyber hygiene and change your passwords regularly, use strong passwords, not reuse your passwords, and always um, be able to manage them because cybersecurity really comes against convenience, which is why a lot of people don't like it, even a lot of people within a company. I know, um, and we can often be seen as the bad guy because we're the ones who go behind people like, hey, did you make sure to do this? Or I would like you to do this before I approve your change or whatever the case may be. And it comes against convenience because what we're asking people to do isn't necessarily easy. Security isn't always fun. Security isn't always easy and um, it's not always convenient. Um, so then you also want to make sure that um, for your accounts, especially things like your email, you're using multi-factor authentication. That could be adding um, the Google auth uh, authentication to your phone or turning it on so that if somebody tries to log into your account, you also get a text message, especially with, with all that's going on in the world. People are hacking into emails left and right. Um, they're hacking into companies left and right. Um, you also want to make sure you're updating your devices and applications and be vigilant on the web. And being vigilant on the web is really the main thing because that avoids um, someone coming in and you're, you're just browsing the internet and now you click on this link and your computer black screens. And then monitoring for activity that's happening because you'll often see the signs. A sign can be your computer is slower than it usually is. A sign could be you realize that things are randomly being deleted or moved around on your computer. You never noticed that before. And now there's this random application on your computer. And one thing I don't have here is to make sure you have antivirus on your computer. Um, and I say this because there's a lot of people who don't have it. They don't see uh, why it's necessary. And although antivirus won't catch anything, it's a good first step. So um, overall, with the state that the world is in, um, with this pandemic and the way that hackers are still actively um, attacking things and people, it is just very important that we practice uh, basic cyber hygiene. So that is the end of my presentation. That's so, so funny, Alisa. <laughs> because uh, sometimes it happened in the past, uh, because I, all my life I worked in IT, and we all know that everybody has the password under their keyboard or uh, uh, I remote in their computer. Oh, I gave you last week my password. <laughs> I don't have your password. I cannot have a list of everybody's password. So yeah, it's really important. And it's so nice to see that all this talk so far, they are interconnecting with each other. So. Uh, <laughs> there is any question there?
Arisa, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, do you recommend something for Chromebooks, or is that does that is that a different world? You talked about like antivirus software, and I wonder if uh, um, is there even a, a concept like that for a, a Chromebook uh, if you're not like on a Mac or a or a PC, Windows PC. Uh, that's a good question. Chromebooks isn't really my specialty. It's it's not something that is used often within a lot of companies. But I believe that any computer should be able to have antivirus on it. And if you can, I would recommend it because any computer can be hacked. It doesn't really matter the operating system. Actually, the new computers yeah. nowadays, they use the fingerprint or your Apple Watch. For example, my uh, new laptop, I can uh, unlock it with my watch because my phone the same and so things like this. So double, I think, uh, yes, uh, multi-factor uh, authentication. Uh, yeah. It helps a lot, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I don't know what that is, but... Okay. Any fun hacker stories? Um, we just put him... Oh, yes, there um, we go. So, yes. I have not seen fun hacker stories um, within my career so far, um, but I have seen a lot of accidents, um, people... Uh, accidentally actually one company accidentally sent out software that infected a bunch of people's computer. I see stuff like that happen but i have not come across any fun hacker story so far i hope someday in my career i'll be able to talk about something like you won't believe what happened but not yet um but i'm still really early in my career hopefully I like <laughs> there is another question there do you recommend some app or service to handle your passwords? Yes. So there's this service called Password Safe. It's actually a free password management tool. Um, you can download it on your laptop, and then you can um, enter the account, the website, and the password into there. Um, there are also apps on your phone. I'm not too familiar with apps on your phone, and I've always been very uh, skeptical of them because uh, you don't want to enter your passwords into an unsecure app. But password safe is something that a lot of companies use, so it's secure and it's trusted. So you can um, look into that one. Is there anything specific or use any tools that you personally do to make you cyber secure? So I use multi-factor um, authentication. Um, my job, we definitely use VPN to get into our work, um, you know, our work network. And uh, also, I, like even on Instagram, I have for it to email me somebody's trying to log in and things like that. So that like multi-factor authentication is really the most basic way to be secure. Also changing your passwords every day. Uh, those are things that I do to um, just even ensure. Apple, even Apple phones now they have, or, or iPads that have this uh, Apple uh, key that you can save all your passwords and you can unlock with your uh, uh, eyes with everything. I think even Google Chrome has that uh, saved on the browser all your passwords and you can unlock with your computer uh, password and see right. all your passwords and things like this. So, yeah. Keychain. I wouldn't, I would not save That's passwords and notes um, at all. So the thing about that is that a lot of times when you save it in notes, a lot of people leave their laptops open. They walk away and they leave their laptops open, which is something you're not supposed to do because let's say you're at work and you leave your laptop open, somebody could come, do something crazy on your laptop, and now you're getting flagged down and you're getting in trouble and you wasn't even the one who did it. But it was on your laptop and under your name. So that's the same thing with leaving it in notes. Notes is open and anybody could come, walk past your laptop, take your passwords. So I would definitely recommend a password safe. That is also password. Passwords should be encrypted when they are sa uh, saved. You should not have it in uh, unencrypted. I, s I think my my personal opinion. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Such a great presentation. Oh. It's complicated, isn't it? It's not. It's just not as easy as uh, <laughs> as it used to be. And it's funny you were talking about like the uh, a lot of the security stuff. Um, you know, because we're concerned about is someone going to steal my password or. <laughs> But a lot of what's happening today is we're being tricked. We're actually, we're doing the thing that's bad because, we, you know, oh, I didn't realize this wasn't my real bank website, you know, or yes. that email, I just ordered this thing. So I totally expected to check the shipping number on it. Let me real quick, just, you know, do that. Oops, you know, <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah. 
you know, some of the convenience where we so we expect the convenience and and click through. I know that that's I've done that. I did that at least well one time where it burnt me, and you know, I had to, I had to, I got some fraudulent credit card charges uh, all because I clicked through something a little too fast. Um, I think there is another question from Jennifer Tran on uh, on the chat. How do password managers keep their service secure? I use last right. I have to sign in via an email or password. I use last password. Right. So if they have a team, they do have a team and they are constantly making sure their services is up to date and protected. Um, and then as long as you have your laptop locked and then you have your password safe with the password, you're you already have a double layer of protection. And it's not to say that no one can ever get into it. Um, you just want to practice a defense in depth um, approach, which means having layers and layers and layers of security. So by doing that, you ensure you have those layers so that it's less likely for you to get attacked. You just want to make it hard, right? So hard that it's just not even worth it. Right. Yeah. Even though even attacks are automated these days, but the harder you make it, that's why the longer your password is, the longer it'll take an attacker to try and to break it. Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, that's great. That that's definitely a, such an important conversation for us all to be having with each other is how to how to keep each other safe in so many different ways these days, right? So, you know, uh, thanks for keeping us safe in this way with this good information. <laughs>